Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at Doom Eternal running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H and this is running on the B-Link SCR5 mini PC. Now we are running the game at the lowest in-game graphics settings at the full 1080p resolution and as you can see the performance numbers that we're getting right now aren't exactly remarkable. The averages are really nice for the most part. I mean being at a 40 FPS average is not really something you're going to struggle with too much. It's the 1% lows that really drag down the whole experience. Now the frame time charts really are what paints the whole picture here. If you'll see things are remain pretty consistent for the most part, but then we will have moments where things will spike up. So in general, the level of performance that we're getting out of this at least feels better than what the numbers on screen would make you think, but it's still not a great experience. Of course, we are at the full 1080p resolution, so we can't adjust things a bit just to see if we can't squeeze out any more performance out of this. But as it stands at the full 1080p resolution, this is going to be pretty much out of the question. It's really going to be a really, really rough experience. And I think that the vast majority of people are really going to find this very difficult to actually try to play. Now, if we enable dynamic resolution scaling with a target FPS of 60, then we're looking at a improved experience, but not by a significant margin. Our averages are now at 60, but it's those 1% lows that drag down the whole experience again. In enclosed areas, the 1% lows are decent enough, but it's once you get into exterior areas and more action is happening that the 1% lows will at some point end up dropping off pretty hard. Again, it is far more playable than what the numbers on screen would lead you to believe. So I think that if you really want to play through the game, you can definitely do it. It's just not going to be the greatest experience ever. So I think that dynamic resolution scaling does salvage the overall experience. But as I said, at some point, things are going to end up dropping down. But if you pay attention to the frame time charts, you'll see that they remain consistent throughout most of the experience with just the occasional spike happening. And a lot of the times the biggest spikes end up happening when there is animations and stuff like that happening. So you don't necessarily have a lot of control over the game at that point anyway and it does recover pretty quickly so i would say that the game itself is pretty playable at this point and considering that you can play the game on the game pass without actually having to buy the game full on i think it's worth giving it a go especially since you are able to actually play the original game really really well on here being able to actually boot in and play the sequel is actually really nice to see on here just don't expect anything remarkable overall though i think that most people are going to be able to play through this just don't look at an fp counter. You think that an FPS counter is going to make you get way too much in your own head about this? Feel it out yourself and see if it actually suits your needs. I know there are a lot of people out there that are very sensitive about FPS in their first person shooters, so this not, might not be to your liking. So if you're in a region where you can actually use the game pass, I would recommend you take advantage of that. Worst case scenario, you can't really play this and you're, you're still going to have hundreds of games to choose from to actually play. Overall though, I'm just such a huge fan of this series that I think that if this was the only system that I had, I would probably stomach through this. I think I could adjust to this without any problems. I mean, I grew up playing a lot of games at just 15 FPS and had a blast with it. If I could get this level of performance on some of the games that I was playing as a kid, things like the original Star Wars Battlefront or the original Call of Duty 4 when it just came out, if I was getting this level of performance in those games. I was going to be perfectly happy. I was playing those at worse frame rates than this and still having a great time. So I definitely recommend recommend that you give it a go. But anyways, I hope you found this quick look at Doom Eternal running on the Ryzen 5 5600H to be useful. Again, it is running on the B-Link SCR5 mini PC, a mini PC that I am a huge fan of. If you're interested in picking it up, you can use those Amazon affiliate links down below. Or if you're interested in picking up anything from Amazon and you'd like to support the channel at no additional cost to you, it is greatly appreciated when you check those links out. And of course, you can support the channel directly for as little as a dollar a month. But anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one.